Hello guys, welcome back to our fourth session of NEET series. I hope you people have enjoyed watching the first three session in this series where we have discussed about the strategy in our session one and we have also seen question based on mechanics. In the second session we have seen uh, questions which are based on electrostatic uh, and then this is my fourth session. In the third session, I hope you people remember that we have discussed question on electric current. So in all my three sessions, I have taken the particular topic in which I feel like that there is high chances that you are going to see maximum number of questions this time. Because grade 12 portion is going to be dominant in this uh, particular exam which is on 12 September 2021. In today's session, which is my session 4, I have selected a specific question from the optics and I have taken question in such a way that I should be able to give you an idea about how we can actually solve questions on this particular unit. Uh, there's a lot of calculation which is going to be involved but my main aim is to make you understand that how exactly we have to use the formula and the places where you have to be very careful about the sign convention because there are a lot of chances in this particular unit that if you make a single mistake of a sign convention, you might uh, get a wrong answer. Now, without wasting any time, let's start with the session and let's start with our today's questions. So the very first question which you can see over here on the screen, it says, a figure shows a mirror M1 which on which a light ray incided at an angle of 40 degree from normal. If the ray is rotated 10 degree clockwise, find the change in angle of deviation of light after reflection. So this is basically a question from reflection. Mostly you people are familiar with the term of deviation when it comes to the prism. But deviation is also something which you can understand over here. How? I will tell you what it is. Because whenever they give you any angle, it is good. In this particular question, they have mentioned it with the normal. But even if they don't mention it or they give you any angle, Remember that always the calculation should be done in such a way that angle should be with the normal. So my angle I can see over here is with normal and I can simply say that here my reflected ray are going to be going this way. So if this is my incident ray, this is my reflected ray, according to the law of reflection this will be 40 degree. My incident ray if it actually there is no mirror present over here, it will definitely go in this particular way. This was my expected path and I can see my reflected ray has been deviated by some angle which is my deviation angle. So if I have to calculate that deviation angle, I think I can calculate the delta i. As you can see this complete angle is 180 degree. So 180 minus your 80 degree will be your deviation which is initial deviation which I am writing as 100 degree. Question says if the ray of light has been rotated clockwise. So let's rotate it clockwise. So that means you will have a new angle which you can see it over here. My incident ray. This is because it has been rotated clockwise by an angle of 10 degree. So I hope you people can relate that definitely this angle is going to be 30 degree. At the same time when you draw your reflected over here, this will also make an angle of 30 degree. And if you have to calculate your deviation for this particular ray, you can see the expected path is this. That light has been deviated at an angle and if you have to calculate this, you can say that delta F, the final deviation, again some straight line, it is 180 degree, but this time you will going to subtract it from 60 degree. So what you can notice over here that when you actually draw this particular diagram, the final deviation after the ray has been rotated 10 degree, it is coming out as 120 degree. But you have to be very careful the option which is given. It is not given one of the angles which you have calculated because the option says definitely the change in angle of deviation. For change in angle of deviation what I will do, I will say that my delta is the change final and initial. So if you take the value of 120 degree and then you subtract 100 from it, your change is going to be this. So the final answer which you can see it over here, it's going to be 20 degree 
is the change in deviation which is going to be happening. So don't try to relate that it will be a direct relation 10 degree is rotated to the same, it can be different, yeah. So this is how we have to solve this question. A question, simple question based on reflection, just use simply the ray diagram and the geometry, that's it. Moving on to the next question which says, in figure shown ray one after getting reflected from mirror one. So you can see mirror one, so this is your ray one. And you can see it has been making a contact with M1, strikes another mirror, M2, and reflected as ray 2. So this is after the reflection, you can see. If the angle between M1 and M2 is given as 60 degree, find the value of angle theta. Now in this particular question, what you need to understand before you actually start solving, I would suggest that whenever you see such diagram, where the multiple surface of mirror has been given to you, first always take help of the normal. So wherever the ray is going to make a contact with the mirror, you people can draw your normal over there. Because normal is something which is always perpendicular. So you will draw the normal for both the surface. So you will get an idea that how exactly your angle will look like. So when I draw my normal for both the surface, M1 and M2, what I can see over here, there is something which I should be able to relate, that my angle of incident is always calculated with the normal. So the first ray is making some angle I, definitely your reflected angle will also be I, which I can write in this way. Now if you see both the rays are 90 degree, so I would be able to predict that this is 60 and both the rays are 90, 90. That means this angle over here should be twice of this 60, which is 120 degree. And if you look at the, this triangle over here, O, A, B, what you will notice that this OAB sum should be 180 degree. So I would be able to write this value over here also, which I can write that it should be whatever the sum of this 60 degree you have over here, this I and this should be equal to the same. So 60 minus I should be my this angle with the second surface. And you know that if you have written 60 minus I, I think this angle is also your reflected angle, which is also going to be 60 minus I. So this is the way somehow I'm going to predict all the angle and if you make this point as C, you can see in triangle A, B, C, guys, what we can do? There is total angle of this one, which I can say it is two times I plus the total angle over here, which can be written as 60 minus I. This is also multiplied by two. And then you are saying this is theta and this sum should be equal to 180 degrees. So I'm using a simple basic property of a triangle that sum of the side of an angle should be 180 degree. Now when you open the bracket over here, 2i plus 120 minus 2i plus theta equal to 180 degree. What you will see that these two are having opposite sign which are going to be get cancelled. And after that if you are calculating the value of theta, you can simply send 120 to the other side, your answer is going to become 180 minus 120, which will be 60 degree. A simple approach of geometry is definitely going to give you the correct answer. So there are a lot of properties which you need to remember in this particular case. So you people have seen all this property in maths, we are just simply using the geometry over here and we are correctly predicting the angle. So I hope you people understand that what exactly I have done how exactly I have predicted my angle of incident and how I can relate the angle with the angle which is given in the diagram. Because when you see the diagram, you can only see one particular angle which is given as 60 degree. So you should be able to relate your angle with that particular value. So that you know, when you solve it, you should have limited number of unknown values and that is the way you can actually solve it, okay? Moving ahead with the next question over here, when you see this question, it says figure shows, uh, two spherical mirror M1 and M2 on same optical axis at a separation of 50 centimeter. A point object O is placed midway between the mirror, which you can see it over here, uh, on optical axis. Find the location and nature of its image after two successive reflection, first at M1 and then at M2. What I'm going to do, I'm going to draw just a simple basic rough diagram so that I should be able to understand what exactly is given in the question. Now if you see this part, if, if, if my ray is going to be traveled in this particular way, uh, definitely 
then it will going to be reflected back in this way. And the expectation is that because of this first reflection, our ray should meet the principal axis somewhere where I can say that my value of i dash is going to be come. I'm saying i dash because I know that this will not be the, my final image because I have to consider the refraction from the second surface as well. Uh, basically reflection from the second surface as well. Now if you have to calculate the value of v, we have a very, now look here, when I say first reflection, I hope you people remember the formula which we used, that is if you have to calculate, first I will write the value of u, object distance, what you will take midway, that means 25 and the value of focal length which you can plug in this case, this is my first spherical mirror which I will write it as 20. You need to calculate v which can be calculated by u f over u minus f. I would suggest you people can use this particular formula. You can use 1 by v minus 1 by u is equal to 1 by f also, that is your wish. But just make sure 1 by v plus 1 by u equal to 1 by f. The lens one is having minus sign and the mirror is having plus sign. So this will be definitely, you have to be figure out which formula we are using where. If you plug the value of u over here which is 25 and then this is 20 and this will be 5 over here. If you simply solve this particular part, I think I'm going to get my answer as 100 centimeter. So what you need to understand that this particular distance which you are going to get, this is from the first mirror, this distance should be at 100 centimeter or you can say from the second mirror, this distance will be 50 centimeter. Because why we need to understand, why we need to draw this particular line from the second mirror, the reason for that, that whatever the image is going to be formed by the first mirror, definitely it's going to be take as a virtual object by the second one. Because second object you have to specify that where exactly the object will be present. So now, when you see the second surface, because from here also your reflection is going to take place and I can say that this is, you know, this is your reflection from the second surface. So your ray, which always travel in a straight path, is going to be appear that it is coming from somewhere here. Now what we need to do, we can say that from second reflection, if you have to calculate the value of u, what do you need to understand? What is the value of u you will take? It is actually, this is the distance, which can be taken as 50. The value of focal length can be 30. And if you use the formula, u into f over u minus f, the value of u is 50, this is 30, and this is 20. So you will find this is 25 into 3 which is 75 centimeter. So from this place, this distance is going to be 75 centimeter. So what you need to understand that this particular image which is going to be formed, it is going to be formed behind the mirror. So you can see it is going to be virtual. That's the reason the image is going to be formed. So always when you draw a rough diagram for any specific arrangement given to you, remember that Rough diagram will give you an idea that what will be your answer. So you have to be very careful when you draw the diagram and you people have seen a lot of diagram and you can simply use the rules of ray diagram in drawing any diagram over here. Yeah, so that is what my answer is going to be and let's move to the next question over here. This question says find the value of x so that the image coincide with the object. A very basic question. What we need to do, we need to calculate the value of x. Now you can see this is actually a lens over here. So it's a combination question. So you have a lens, you have a mirror. What I'm going to do first, let me calculate that if this lens has been placed over here, because of it, where I'm going to get the image. So when I use this formula, which is one by V minus one by U equal to one by F. Let me show you with the sign convention also how you can do this particular question. Now look here v you need to find, u has been given in the question. Now when you look at the u value, you need to understand 
that from the pole, because every distance is actually calculated from the pole, and you are going to calculate this distance from this particular manner, means you are going against the ray of light. So when you write the value of u, it should be plugged as minus 15. Focal length over here is positive, which I'm writing it as 10. And I think you people can solve this particular part to get the value of v. So what I will do, 1 by v will be 1 by 10 minus 1 by 15. So when you solve this, you can write this is 150 and this is 15 minus 10. So V value will be 150 by 5 which is 30 centimeter. Now what you need to understand that this answer which you are getting is positive. So definitely you can say that after this lens, your ray is going to make travel in this particular manner. For your reference, this is where the image is going to be formed. Now what you need to understand, it says the find the value of x, that final image coincide with the object. You are getting this value as 30 centimeter because always you are getting the value from the pole. So from pole, if I have to write this value, it will be plus 30 centimeter. What you need to understand that in this case, the image will coincide only when it is actually going to trace back the same path. And that is possible only when this image, which is formed for the spherical surface, it should be present at radius of curvature. Because according to the rule, we know that, that when the ray is going to pass through the center of curvature, it is going to trace back the same path. So you need to understand that this image should be formed at 20 centimeter. The total distance you have calculated, it is 30 from here and this can be 20. So the remaining distance which you have over here, which will remain between the two will definitely be 30 minus 20, which will give you 10. So in this case, it's actually logically you can give that the value of X, which you have to calculate between the two devices, lens and the mirror, it's going to be 10 centimeter and that is how you can approach. So there are various ways that one can approach different types of the question. So I'm trying to use all the concepts because sometimes people actually go for a direct formula, sometimes people actually go for the sign convention and for sign convention you can use the same rule along the light you can take positive. If you're going any distance against the ray of light, you can take it as negative. So that is an easy way and it will actually reduce your chances to make some mistake over there. Now let's move on to the next question over here. The next question which we have, it says locate the final image of an arrangement given below. So you people have seen expression for uh, when a ray of light is traveling from rarer to denser medium or denser to rarer medium. In this case, what you need to understand that you have first medium, which is air. For that, definitely your refractive index value is one. The second over here is your lens, which is given in the question that it is three by two. And then you have the third medium, which is N3, which I'm going to write four by three, which is also given in this particular question. Now, you have seen one particular formula which I have discussed with you, which I have given, and that is what the formula which we have to use over here because we have three medium. So when you're dealing with three medium, let me write the formula first. At which formula you have to use? It is N3 minus N1 over V minus N1 by U equal to N2 minus N1 R1 plus N3 minus N2 by R2. So it is very important that you should know this particular formula we have to use because even if you remember the formula, okay, it will save a lot of time. There is no need to derive this particular formula over here. But what you need to understand that knowing the formula is not, it doesn't mean that you actually get the answer because here there's a possibility that you can make a mistake. So just try to understand one particular thing. Then I'm going to plug the value over here for refractive index, for V, for U, for R1, R2. We need to understand that how we are going to plug the value. Aim is to locate the image, so V is not known to us. But when I'm going to plug the value, let's see over here. N3, which is 4 by 3, 
minus 1 because the refractive index of air is 1 this v is not known to us minus sign 1 now it says u u is actually you can see over here it has been kept at a distance 30 centimeters and let me tell you when you are going to calculate the distance from the poles you have to travel again so this value when you plug it should be plugged as minus 30 centimeter okay now the second surface uh, now first equal to sign n2 minus n1 you people already know the value of n2 which is written as the length which is 3 by 2 minus 1 because refractive index of air is 1 and the denominator is r1 now try to understand r1 your this is your first interacting surface over here and if you see this is going to have its radius in this direction which is definitely along the ray of light because if object is here your ray is definitely going to travel in this way so you need to understand over here that whatever distance you are going to take over here it is along so this value of r1 when i am going to plug you can see i am going to travel in this direction means it should be plugged as plus 20. similarly when you plug the value of n3 which is 4 by 3 minus n2 which is 3 by 2 now r2 value if you calculate which is the second surface of the lens this is going to have its radius in this direction because when you draw the arc definitely the needle of the compass need to be placed on that side and you will find that for r2 you are going again so be very careful that r2 value should be plugged as, as minus 30 so when you know the formula but if you make a mistake in the sign convention you will not get the correct answer so my aim that here to understand that how we have taken the sign convention so when you people solve this particular question understand that the value of sign convention should be plugged very carefully so that you know you should avoid making any such mistake now when i solve this part what i can say over here it will be your value 4 by 3 minus 1 which can be written as 1 by 3 so i will write it as uh, i will solve it i will simplify it so it will be plus 1 by 30 equal to this is Three by two, this is two, one by two, which is one by forty plus three and two, this is right. One by nine so minus minus I think you can solve this particular part and I can write it as uh, plus one by 80 so I will directly write it over here one by 80 yeah okay now we will solve this part over here we need to calculate the value of v so what you can say one by three v as it is plus I will take this value of 4 to the other side this will make it 1 by 30 
I shall plug the sign 1 by 40 plus 1 by 80 minus 1 by 30. Yeah. Just this calculation over here. Now, if you multiply this whole thing by ten, so what will happen? This will become a bit simple and now if you solve this I think you will get your answer so what do you people need to do it over here that 18 3 and 4 let me write this is 36 uh, 9 plus 2 minus you can say this is 12 now minus 1 by 36 this is 10 over 3v minus 1 by 36 so v value look like it's going to be 10 into 36 minus 3 so when you see it over here this is going to be minus 1 20 which will be your final answer so I hope everything is correct over here okay and your answer which you're going to write it over here as 120 centimeter so I hope you can see the entire calculation yeah so calculation part is something which is basically very fundamental which you people need to understand that when you start solving this particular part try to do as many shortcut you can do that here I have actually shown you that how you can do the calculation and you can reach to the correct answer so this is basically how you are going to do this type of a question and you have to ultimately what you need to remember that there are two things which are very important one that you should know that which formula we have to use and the second when you people use the sign convention you should be able to plug the correct value because then there will be a chance that you will might make some mistake over here okay now once we are done with this particular question over here I hope everything is correct in terms of the calculation which we have done so this is what's going to be our answer let's move to the next question over here yeah so this final image we can say it's going to be at 120 centimeter from the uh, lens which has been given and you need to understand that the sign convention whatever you're getting you should definitely see the same sign convention plus or minus in the option as well okay now when we see the next question over here uh, the next question says find area of region through which light will come out so uh, what what you need to understand uh, here that the very first thing uh, that this concept is actually based on your total internal reflection because when it says find area of region through which light will come out sometimes the question can also come in such a way that they will tell you that there is a fish under the water and what will be the area which the fish can see or visualize so this is all such question will definitely fall under total internal reflection now let me tell you what exactly the total internal reflection will look like to you so when you have a light traveling from denser to rarer if it is straight it will go undeviated but when you actually go from denser to rarer the refraction happens when you keep on increasing your incident angle there will be one particular angle where you will find the refraction angle will become 90 degree and this particular angle you call your critical angle so what you need to understand that this theta which we have to which has been given over here is going to play a very crucial role because if you see that this is actually after this point if you try to see outside what will happen total internal reflection will happen and you won't be able to see outside the water so this angle which has been given to us will make use of it and what I'm going to do first that first I will see that radius value is it a way that I can calculate my radius value yes 
tan theta is equal to opposite by adjacent. So I will say that radius can be written as h tan theta. So this is what my radius value can be calculated. So I will calculate this radius value, but you people need to understand that refractive index of medium is also given to you. For that, what you will do, we need to calculate area and this region over here, it's nothing, it is a circle. I can use my formula pi r square and when you write the value of r, make sure it is, we have already calculated h square tan square theta. Now you have to be very careful that how you're going to plug the value of theta because I hope you people remember that refractive index in this case is given as one upon sine IC. This IC which I'm writing is nothing, it is your critical angle. So this can also be written as one over sine theta C. So if you are writing sine theta C value, it can be calculated in this way. So theta C value can be calculated as sine inverse of one by N. So whatever the value of N, which is refractive index of the liquid, which has been given to you, you have to simply plug it over here and you would be able to get your answer. So my aim here is to explain that how you can actually think about this question, okay? And that is what you need to do. What do you need to do first? Look at the formula of area, which is simple and whatever the factor, whatever the physical quantity, which is unknown over there, like radius, for that, what you can do, you can calculate the radius by some relation which you can see in the diagram. So in the diagram, the examiner has given you H, the examiner has given you the value of R, the examiner has also given you the value of refractive index and the theta value which is given over there, you have to relate the concepts of total internal reflection over there which you say TIR and that is how exactly you can plug the value and you will get your answer. So I hope if any value has been given to you, you would be able to use this a set of formula and you would be able to get your answer, okay? Now let's move on to the next question over here. The next question which we have, okay. Uh, question, I have taken one particular question from this wave optics because I wanted you to understand that if there is any question come on this particular part from wave optics, you should be able to do it by this particular method. So first of all, I have written somewhere around 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 question to you. Now you need to understand that if you know all this question, there will be no question where you're going to get stuck during the exam, okay? So we'll go from a basic question to a difficult level, but first thing which you need to understand about Young double slit experiment, which also written as YDSE, is what? Look here. When you read the question, the very first thing which you should know that Young double slit experiment we know that there are two sources and from the sources we keep a screen at some distance and that distance is taken as capital D. And when you read the question it says that your between, the distance between screen and slip is one meter so this is given to you. The second information which I can say the experiment where the wavelength of 500 nanometer is used that means if you see this point where your ray of light is going to be traveled, so ray of light, so these are the two waves which are going to be traveled and they have given you that this wavelength is 500 nanometers. So when I'm writing the value, I'm writing in terms of meters or so 10 ratio minus 9 meter. Now what you need to understand the next part is actually the slit, the distance between the slit, which is very important over here. This is the distance which has been given to you. And you usually write it as small d, one millimeter means one into 10 raise to minus three meter. So this is what the information has been given to you. And based on this particular diagram, what examiner can ask you, it can ask you like different position, right, fringe width. There are various questions which I've written. We are going to solve them one by one. But what I want you to understand that in case y, which I'm going to use in my formula, that y simply tells you the position where you are going to observe the interaction of these two waves which are coming from S1 and S2, yeah? So when I'm going to solve this question, I'm going to break it into different parts and then I'm going to solve it one by one and I want you people to pay attention that what exactly it is. If you remember that this whole concept is learned on the basis of path difference and phase difference. When we talk about path difference, the value is given in terms of lambda. When we talk about phase difference, the value is given in terms of pi. So if we have to 
calculate a part difference. The one formula which we know is YD over capital D and I hope you people can relate this from this diagram. Delta X is your path difference. Y is the position. So this position which I have written, this is Y, okay? Or you can write this Y and you can write this also Y. Same thing. Small d is your separation distance and capital D is your distance between the slit and screen. Now what exactly we have to do? The first thing, we have to calculate the fringe width. Now I hope you people know that fringe width when it comes, now let me break this fringe width part. The fringe width formula, the symbol for fringe width is W, the symbol for angular fringe width is beta. Okay, so wherever I'm using the value symbol W, remember it's a fringe width, beta is angular fringe width. Fringe width is defined as lambda capital D over small d. So when you have to calculate fringe width, you already know that lambda value is given as 500 nanometer. So 500 into 10 to minus 9, capital D is 1 meter and small d is given as 1 into 10 to minus 3 meter. Now when you solve this fringe width part, what you will get? You will get your answer will be 5 into 10 ratio minus 3 if you take it up, it will be uh, minus 6 and there are two zeros. So I will write 5 into 10 to minus 4 meter. This is my fringe width. Now next question says angle of fringe width, for that you need to understand the same setup. You have two sources and let's say you observe your first fringe over here. Let me name it as nth fringe. The angle is theta. Then you observe your second fringe. For that your, it is n plus 1. So two consecutive you can say that. So n plus 1 fringe. Now what do you need to understand? This angle is theta 2. So first one is theta 1, second angle is theta 2. Angle of fringe width is nothing, it is this angle. So this is my beta and this is nothing, this is something which you can say it is fringe width. So we are interested in this value of beta if you observe this beta which I am writing over here. This beta, even if you write tan theta, tan theta is opposite by adjacent. So you get this value of beta as fringe width over capital D. Because the distance which we are going to take between the slit and the screen, it's going to be approximately the same which you are actually taking from point O to that particular point. So even this dotted line represent, it will be approximately equal to capital D only. So we don't have to worry about this part. Fringe width formula is already you know that lambda D by small d and then what will happen? Basically fringe width whenever you have to calculate, it is simply wavelength by the slit distance. So when I plug the value of wavelength over here, which is 500 into 10 raised to minus 9 meter and small d which is 1 into 10 raised to minus 3, the answer will look like the same, but please don't make the mistake of writing it as meter because this is angle of fringe width, means the answer which you will get, you will get in terms of radian. So that is the way you people can derive this particular value or this uh, value of angle of fringe width also. Fringe width and angle of fringe width are very basic part of this particular question which you need to understand. Now when you read the second, uh, third question, which is location of fifth maxima and third minima. Now first let me tell you, when you solve the C part of this question, fifth maxima and third minima. First of all, you need to understand maxima. Maxima means your bright fringe. Your bright fringe formula is what? Your fifth bright they want. So you have to use your bright fringe formula, which can be written as N lambda D by small d. This is your formula for fifth bright fringe. Similarly, it says location of third minima. So third, this is dark, so I'm writing it is 2n minus 1 by 2 lambda d by d. So these are the two formula which we have to use and we would be able to calculate the value. So let me tell you that when you calculate this fifth bright fringe, what you can do? 
you have to be very smart this n, n simply represent the fin which you are going to locate over here. So it says fifth, so definitely it will be fifth. Lambda d by d, lambda d by d is nothing, it is your fin width, guys, which you have already calculated. So is that okay if I write this as w and even here, when you write the value of 3, what is going to be happen? It will be 5 by 2 and lambda d by d can also be written as w. So now I think my entire calculation become a bit simple because I already know the value of w, so I don't have to do it again. So if I write the value w over here, it will be 25 into 10 raised to minus 4 meter. Similarly, when I'm going to plug the value of w over here, it is 5 by 2 and this width is given as 5 into 10 raised to minus 4. So 25 and divide by 2 will be 12.5 into 10 raised to minus 4 meter. So this is how I can actually locate the position of my fifth maxima and third minima. So the entire calculation which we are doing, it is all related to the formula which we know because we have derived all this formula and that is the reason I am using it but I am just simply telling you that how you can actually relate one formula with the other. So the value of fifth bright fringe and the third dark fringe which I have written, what I did, I actually taken help of my fringe width formula and I have written this entire formula in terms of W only which become a bit simple because we already have that value over here. Now once we are done with the first three part of this question, let's move to the next part which we have to solve that is D and E. Now in the D part of the question, the question says separation distance between fourth maxima and first minima. You people already seen the formula for the maxima and minima. So when I write separation distance, so basically the gap between the two, so you have your y fourth maxima that means fourth bright minus first minima that means first dark. Now you simply plug the value over here. So formula I think for bright it is n lambda d by d minus 2n minus 1 by 2 lambda d by d. This is your formula. Now what I can do? I can do the same thing. This is fourth bright. So fourth I'm writing, I'm replacing lambda d by small d by w, which is my fringe width formula. Here also, if you plug the value of 1, it will be 1 by 2 only, so I can write w by 2. Now, if you solve this particular part, what you will get, this is going to get you 7w by 2, and 7w by 2 means your fringe width, which is 5 into 10 raised to minus 4 which you people have already calculated. I think if you solve this you will get 17.5 into 10 raised to minus 4 meter. Yeah, again a very simple approach we have taken. So instead of plugging all the values separately we have already make use of the fringe width formula which we have derived earlier and by using that particular formula we are able to do this thing. Now in this part we have one more question which says that ratio of maximum to minimum intensity, if the intensity is given to you is I1, 9 I0 and I2 which is 4 I0. Okay. When I solve this part of the question, first of all, I need to remember my formula for intensity. So if you remember I max and I minimum, they have been given in terms of A1 plus A2. A1, A2, A2 is simply the amplitude of two waves, square of it and when you calculate the minima, minimum it is A1 minus A2 square. Now what do you people need to understand, there is a uh, simple way to solve it. So instead of using this formula, I hope you people know the relation. Intensity is directly proportional to square of amplitude. So I think amplitude can be written as under root of i. So what I am going to do, I am simply going to write this formula in such a way that A1 can be written as root of I1 plus root of I2 and then there is a whole square of it. Then denominator will be I1 minus root of I2 and then there is a square of it. Now if you look at the question I1 and I2 value is given to you, if you directly plug the I1 and I2 value, what is going to be happen? I think if you plug the value of I1 and I2, I1 is given as 9 I0. 
so when you have 9 i not given to you root of 9 i not will give you 3 i not so i2 is 4 i not so root of 9 i not let me plug the value this is 4 i not and here also you have 9 i not minus 4 i not there is a square outside the bracket which you can plus and if you see 9 it will be 3 i not 4 i not will be 2 so it will get 5 i not the whole square which will be 25 i not square denominator is 3 minus 2 which will be 1 i not square so basically you can see the ratio which you are going to get is 25 by 1 so here it's a simple relation the between intensity and between intensity and amplitude which we can define which give us the result so again a formula based question you need to be have a very simple approach and the moment you plug the value which has been given to you by the examiner you able to get your answer yeah now let's move on to the next question over here which is the part of the same question which we are solving because I have taken one particular question and I am deriving all possible questions from the young double slit experiment. The question says if I1 I2 equal to I0 then find minimum distance of point having half of maximum. This is actually the diagram which I have shown you over here. It shows you the fringe. Uh, diagram which we have drawn so this is the graph of young double slit experiment this fringe which is drawn over here everywhere the peak the peak which we have it define the bright spot and this part over here define the dark spot I have specifically taken one particular line at the center so you can say this is your central maxima so if you people have seen uh, this particular expression of young double slit experiment we know that in young double slit experiment the central maxima is observed where the path difference and phase difference is zero so you can see that this particular line which I've drawn on central maxima this dotted line these two relation delta x which is your path difference delta theta which is your phase difference both have been written zero when you see your first dark this is your first dark over here and first dark is actually calculated at delta x equal to lambda by 2 and your delta theta should be pi. So we know the condition that whenever you see a destructive pattern the power difference should be lambda by 2, 3 lambda by 2, 5 lambda by 2 and then we made a general formula. Similarly the phase difference you can also relate by pi, 3 pi, 5 pi. Okay. Now all the peak are constructive the bottom part of that particular graph is destructive now what you need to understand over here that I have written the condition for first bright also this is my first bright condition the delta x and delta theta should be what and I have written my second bright also you can keep on writing all this thing but I just simply want you people to understand this graph because this question will be more easy if you have a knowledge of this graph over here question says find the minimum distance of point having half of maximum intensity so first of all you need to understand the maximum intensity which you can get when both the intensities are same that is 4 i naught so this is something which you people already know from the formula that if you plug the value of i1 i2 as i i naught you are going to get it as 4 i naught so the maximum intensity which you get is actually 4 i naught now question says minimum distance of point having half of maxima so this red line which I have red dots which I have drawn over here all the red dot if I connect let me tell you on this particular line your intensity is exactly the half because I have taken half of the amplitude of this particular wave so everywhere your intensity is half examiner can ask you any point over here that calculate the intensity half but here in this case he has precisely said the minimum distance of a point of half means either you can give the distance of this one or this one because from central maximum these are the first two points which is going to be calculated first so if it says minimum distance then you have to do what you definitely have to calculate the y value for these two 
Now, if the diagram is clear to you, let me tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to calculate this position of this and you people already have an idea that if you know that delta x value for central maxima is this and delta x value for the first dark is this. So whatever answer I'm going to get, it should be definitely it between zero to lambda by two. So we have to be very careful that by just drawing the rough diagram, we get an idea that what should be the answer and what exactly the window of our answer that it should be placed between the, these two values. Now, once we are clear with all this thought process, now we can approach this particular question. And let me tell you here what you have to do the first thing. First, we will write the intensity formula, that resultant intensity formula is 2 i naught 1 plus cos delta theta. My aim is to calculate this delta theta. For that, what I'm going to do, I'm going to plug the value. For plugging the value, you people have already read the question. Now, we have to be very careful when we read the question. It says intensity should be half of the maximum. So, your maximum is 4 i naught. It should be half of it. Then I can say it is 2 i naught 1 plus cos delta theta. So basically my aim is to calculate the phase difference that what will be the phase difference where I'm going to get this intensity half. And I told you which point I'm going to calculate. I'm going to locate this y value. That is what my aim is. How to do that? I'll show you. Here if you see it will become 2 i naught. This is 2 i naught. This is 1 plus cos delta theta. I have simply divided this. So 2i naught by 2i naught will be 1. And this is again 1 plus cos delta theta. I hope you people can calculate the value of cos delta theta. It is going to become 1 minus 1, which is 0. So that means this delta theta over here, the cos value is 0 when the angle is 90 degree. So delta theta I am getting it is pi by 2. Wow. So I got what? I got the value of phase difference. Now it's a very simple relation that how phase difference if you have calculated how you can relate it with the path difference. For that I'm going to do one more step because I hope you people know this formula that if you have phase difference delta theta you can calculate your path difference by this. So what I'm going to do my aim is to calculate delta x. So for delta x I will write it is lambda over 2 pi and this is delta theta. Now let's plug the value of delta theta. You people got the value of delta theta as what? You got the value of delta theta as pi by 2. So I'm going to plug it as pi by 2. Pi pi get cancelled. This value is going to become lambda by 4. So guys we got the value of delta x. First we got delta theta as pi by 2. Now we got the value of delta x which is lambda by 4. So what exactly I know? I know the path difference where the intensity is going to be half. That path difference is actually lambda by 4. Now if you people remember there is one general formula which we have written for the path difference and that path difference formula is written as delta x equal to y d over capital D. You know the path difference, so we will plug the value of this delta x which we have already calculated that it is going to be lambda by 4. Aim is to calculate the value of y because I have already showed you in the graph that how the value of y will look like. So what I am going to do, I am going to write this y value will be written as lambda d and this is 4 small d. I hope when you see lambda d by d, you are able to relate now that lambda d by d is nothing, it is your fringe width formula. So is that okay if I write that this y is nothing, it is fringe width divided by 4 and fringe width I have calculated 5 into 10 raised to minus 4 divided by 4. So I think I have my answer for this particular question over here and this 5 by 4 if you solve, okay. So you are going to get your answer. So this is the way you need to approach this question. If you have to remember some hint what you need to do. Remember first you need to calculate the value of delta theta. After delta theta you people will relate it with delta x. The moment you calculate delta x then you can go for y value in this particular equation. So 
it is one particular case I have taken, examiner can give you any point. So you have to be very careful that when you do this question, you have to be very careful that which point the examiner want. Examiner can specifically give you some two points also and he wants a maximum intensity is half between these two points. So for that, I will show you one more question because in that case, you need to have take one particular precaution. So when you read this question, now be very careful. It says find location of point having intensity 1 by 4. What we did? We did 1 by 2. Now it says 1 by 4th of maximum intensity and is located between second maxima and third minimum. Now if you look at the graph, second maxima, this is your second maxima. This is your second minima, third minima. Means your answer should be somewhere here between these two. Now what do you need to be do? You are going to do the same thing, but there's one particular step which you need to follow over here. So I will show you this particular part that how you need to approach this question. First of all, I hope you people are clear that intensity, the resultant intensity formula which I'm writing, it should be written and we should be able to calculate the value of delta theta. So my delta theta, if I have to calculate my resultant intensity, what is the resultant intensity? The max is actually 4 I naught, but this time you want 1 by 4th of it. Then you can say it is 2 I naught over here. This is 1 plus cos delta theta. Now if I solve this value of uh, over here, 4 and 4 will get cancelled. I'm going to get my delta theta value. So this is I naught, I naught you can, can cancel. So this is basically 1 by 2 equal to 1 minus cos delta theta. So if you do cos delta theta over here, it will be minus 1 by 2. I hope you people remember that cos value 1 by 2 you are going to get when it is 120 degree. So you people write this delta theta as 2 pi by you got the value of delta theta. But still the challenge is not over. We need to understand that when we get the value of delta theta, our next aim is what? Our next aim is to calculate the value of delta x. Now let's go for delta x. For delta x, I hope you remember the formula that delta theta is 2 pi by lambda into delta x. My aim is to calculate delta x, I will make it as a subject and I will write it as lambda over 2 pi into delta theta. Now I am going to plug the value of delta theta over here. So this is lambda by 2 pi, delta theta is 2 pi by 3, pi pi get cancelled. What you are going to see that delta x value which you are getting, delta x value which you are going to get over here is lambda by 3. But let me tell you, there is one particular mistake which we are making over here. That mistake is what? The value of delta x which you are writing, the value of delta theta which you are writing, you have to be very careful. The reason for that is what? Because, let me show you, you people have already known that at this particular point, because the question says second maxima and third minima the delta theta value over here is already 4 pi. From this 4 pi, you have seen the place where the intensity is going to be 1 by 4 and that particular value you people have calculated as 2 pi by 3. So what I need to do, what I need to do, guys understand, don't go directly for delta theta because delta theta should be written that from central, let me be clear, from central bright fringe, you already have 4 pi and then you have calculated this angle. So that means if delta theta need, value needs to be plugged, it is going to be plugged as 14 pi by 3. So this value which you are plugging over here, it should be 14 pi by I hope you people understood that what we need to be take care of because this is not the case we have done in the first question or you can say the previous question because there I was actually at the center maximum only. But in this case, if I have to give 
this particular value from the central bright frame, what you need to understand that I am giving the distance from here. So you have to calculate the phase which you have over here. And that actually something which you can see from the graph for second bright, it is going to be 4 pi. So the moment you add that particular value 4 pi plus 2 pi by 3, you get your value. Now what you can do? You can simply simplify this and it comes out as 7 by 3 lambda. This is my value of delta x which is absolutely correct because that is what you need to understand over here because if you see the graph also the path difference is 2 lambda by 3 for that particular case. So that path difference is going to be more than that. So you can see it is somewhere around 2 point something. Yeah. So now if we get delta x I hope you are clear delta theta delta x the next step is writing the value of y which you people already know that if you have to calculate the value of y which can be written as or the general formula of delta x is y d by capital D you people already calculated this is going to be 7 by 3 lambda we are aim is to calculate the value of y so you take the, the rest of the value on the other side so it will be 7 by 3 lambda d by d and you know that lambda d by d is everywhere is related as fringe width. Now if you simply plug the value of fringe width which is going to be 5 into 10 raised to minus 4 solving this particular part will give you the correct answer. Yeah. So guys what we need to understand one particular experiment young double slit experiment we have solved a b c d e f g part in it. So I hope whichever question the examiner asked you on this particular experiment you should be able to deal with it now. Yeah, because we have a very elaborative discussion and I have covered every single type of question which can be asked by the examiner. The set of formula which I have used uh, definitely it's a combination of grade 11th and grade 12th because some people uh, some formulas you people have seen in grade 11 when it comes to the chapter oscillation and some of the formula you people have learned in this year. So remember this is a combination of two set of formula which we are using and we are getting all the desired answers which we need to get yeah. Let's move on to the next question over here. Here it says for a given YDSC the thickness 10.4 micrometer slab okay this slab has been introduced in between and it says the D is 0 0.50 millimeter N value is given 1.5 and capital D is 1.5 meter and wavelength is 500 millimeter. The first question says calculate the value of delta x and delta theta at center of screen. Now you need to understand first that because of this slab which we have introduced over here the ray is going to travel the distance the distance which is calculated inside the slab the formula is n minus v the refractive index of the slab minus 1 by thickness of the slab. This is one particular formula which we need to remember. Uh, if you look at this point if you have to calculate delta x delta x I think you know that delta x is nothing it is the distance going to be traveled from source to to point C plus because you have some extra distance which is traveled inside the slab also. So I would suggest you people add that also in S2 C and then write it out S1 C and this sum should be what is going to be happen this sum if you solve it you can simply say s2 c s1 c is almost the same. So it will be n minus 1 c. So if you are calculating delta x value in this case it can be simply calculated by n by n minus 1 by 2 c. This is 1.5 minus 1 and the thickness of the slab is given as 10.4 into 10 raised to minus 8. So I think you can do the calculation to get this particular answer. The only thing which you need to understand is what that the slab which has been introduced you can't go with the set of standard formula which you have because you have to consider the distance which is going to be traveled inside the slab as well. Now if you get delta x I hope there is no problem in delta theta because you people have related delta theta value which you can simply do 2 pi by lambda multiplied by delta x. So this delta x value whatever you are going to get it over here you can plug it over here and you will get your answer. Yeah, so calculating delta x and delta theta at center of screen you can simply calculate by this. So what I have done I have simply taken the distance traveled to the screen subtracted the two and this time 
definitely the power difference is not going to come zero at the center because both the sources are not going to travel the same distance. It says center, locate center of maxima on the screen. Now you need to understand, locate center as because of the slab there is some extra distance traveled, your center maxima is not going to be observed at the midpoint of the two slits but it will shift a bit down. Now aim is to calculate this y value basically where it has been located center of maxima on the screen. What you can understand? There is one particular logic which you people need to understand first that my path difference which I am going to get S1 P and S2 P and S2 P is the one which comes with the slab. These two distance should be same because center maxima where it is observed, center maxima is observed where delta x should be 0 means the two waves which are going to travel some distance at point P, they can't have any path difference over here. So basically they should be same, they should be equal. So in this particular case now what we can do, when you actually write down the formula as S1 P minus S2 P equal to N minus 1 T. This S1 P S2 P is something which you can relate, it is your Y n minus 1 into t. Now if, if this is your path difference formula which you can write it as yd over capital D, I think you people can now calculate the value of y. So if you need to calculate the value of y, guys what I am going to do, I am going to simply make y as my subject and then I am going to take these value to the other side. So my expression becomes like this. So I hope you people can now plug the value because n is given 1.5, capital D is given to you in the question it is 1.5, small d is also given to you 0 0.50 millimeter which we are going to convert into meters and then we are going to plug it. So by plugging all this value you are going to get the answer for the second part of this question as well. Okay. Now the third part let me show you that how fringe shift can be calculated. For fringe shift we have a direct formula, I hope you people remember that fringe shift is actually something if you calculated this y then this fringe width can be plugged for that you have a direct formula which you people can plug it as n minus 1 t by lambda. So when you look at this particular formula I don't think there is any value which is not uh, known to you. When you read the question you can simply see the value of t, uh, the n and the lambda has been given to you. So this is how we can plug the value and you can get the answer. The main thing which you need to understand in this particular discussion is what there are chances that even if you know the formula there is some calculation mistake you should not do in between and here definitely the formula is going to help you but make sure for whichever experiment you have the graph if you can remember the values of graph for dark bright from the graph itself it will actually help you to identify or locate the correct answer because if you have known the value of path difference and phase difference from the graph, you would be able to know the window that your answer should come in between what. And in case if you can see some option because sometimes there will be only one particular option which you can see which falls in that particular window so that you don't have to do the calculation. You can save the entire time in just simply uh, stating that particular answer is going to be correct. Yeah. So this is one particular topic, it's vast. Uh, I have taken some specific question, I feel like that I should uh, uh, do this question because there are a lot of formula which we have to use and I just wanted to make use of all the formula so you people should get familiar with all the things, yeah. So this is it for today's session, thank you guys, thank you very much, we will see you in the next session and wish you all the best for your exams, keep on preparing, thank you, bye bye.